Salvatore Pais is a really interesting guy, man. Like, weirdly, we're like actually good friends at this point, which oh, really? is such That's a strange cool. thing, yeah. you know, like US Space Force and US Navy phys physicist responsible for some of the weirdest patents uh, coming out oh, of boy. the of the military, yeah. right? You know, like like straight up what people would call UFO technology. Uh, you know, piezoelectric generators and plasma generators and, you know, anti-gravity devices and hybrid aerospace underwater craft, transmedium mm. vehicles, all that. Um, yeah, like I've spoken to Salvatore Pais quite a number of times. I've had him on for a few interviews. Nice. And he strikes me as an intuitive scientist. Mm. Someone, I don't want to necessarily say a Tesla because I don't know if yeah. he's as brilliant as a Tesla. But he's got that same kind of intuitive um, scientific spiritual symbiosis. Like we've spoken on that many times. He's a very spiritual guy. And, you know, when I actually, when I last interviewed Salvatore, it was for the uh, the crazy document I created with um, with AI, where I basically got an AI to break down my testimony of my UFO experiences and provide several hypotheses for what it could be. Oh, cool. And I did this in a jailbroken version of AI, so it wasn't in like the standard session. Yeah. It was using Claude 2.1, which is Anthropics AI, which has now been changed to Claude 3 Opus, which is a nerfed version pretending to not be a nerfed version. Oh. So it's like, you know, it sounds smart, but it's not doing what it was doing before. Right. And um, I, yeah, I, I, over the course of a few days, I was communicating with the AI in one single session. And this was starting to change its behavior quite significantly mm. and was giving me answers to things it wouldn't normally give. So I gave this incredibly detailed breakdown of my testimony of my experiences and asked it to create these hypotheses, yeah. which created a 102 page document wow. with some of the nuttiest ideas <laughs> about like non-locality and the wow. somatic antenna of the spine and the collagen matrix. And no that, it, dude, it went deep. It went so deep. I was having to literally like, you know, kind of cross reference and be like, okay, so that means that, that means this. Right. I sent it to Salvatore. He like, emails me back like, dude, it's three in the morning and I can't sleep. I've been <laughs> reading through this and he was blown away. Wow. So we did an interview not that long ago where we're kind of going through the document and what interests him the most. You know, the whole idea of the 21 grand Grams. I know people don't want it because they consider it pseudoscience. As a matter of fact, if you look up that idea of 21 grams, immediately classify it as pseudoscience. But what if it's above top secret? Do you want to explain science? that for anyone who doesn't know what that means? Do you want to explain it? Supposedly, once the body is no longer alive, from any point of view, it loses 21 grams. And some people think this is the idea of the soul and its energy mass equivalence what if somehow what if the whole idea of our body is to act as a cage for the soul oh uh, again what does the heart do it beats again oscillations fluctuations in fields yes it does it as a certain extremely low frequency compared to for example, high frequency gravitational wave generation. But what if there's a way to couple the fields? Something we do not understand, something our physics doesn't speak to, and yet exists. A super force of sorts that may act differently at different levels. Yes, it exists at Planckian scales, but that does not mean it does not manifest its power at other scales but what i'm uh, getting to with that is that he's not a closed-minded material reductionist scientist yeah. even though he's a physicist and maybe that's what's actually afforded him the ability to create these innovative ideas and i think he's been fucked around by the uh, military industrial oh, complex sure. and the space force you know because uh, I, I won't mention names but there's you know some pretty prominent people that said that they would help him and, That's uh, what they say. And, and they did And they left him hanging uh, for the most part, at least, you know, from the last time I spoke to him, it doesn't seem like anyone from kind of the big players has actually pushed his story forward. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of him. He's a, he's a very interesting guy, very friendly guy, and very smart. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's awesome. Um, I'm just starting to dive more into mm. his work so that's that's awesome to hear you say that now i'm really excited you should check out the latest to, talk to we did because it is interesting and he's just got a very 
you know, he, he sees the problems we see, he senses yeah. the spiritual disruption we sense, and he's also got that physics brain, so he kind of goes nice. off on these mathematical tangents, and then is talking about consciousness, and it's like, wow, man. That's my favorite kind Dynamic of duo, yeah. Physicist, scientist. Oh, yeah. Well, like, maybe yeah. maybe we can get him over here at some point. We'll yeah, see. that'd be awesome, man. That, that, that's so cool. I'm so glad I asked about that. Mm. Um, it's just, just remarkable, you know, and uh, God, as far as the patents and the inventions you know that i'm of the mind you know and and look i i, I like michael sala i'm everyone has a different opinion about him i i think he's you know he's he's a little far out even for me on some <laughs> things um but he's a guy who i think is is earnestly trying to help usher in information that has been hidden you know and and the books that he's written about the secret space programs i right. think while some of them may feature people who are questionable, um, he does do a remarkable job in correlating events that really happened yeah. in government, you know, on the planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, events that you can go and verify and, and things that were being said and, and leaked through some of the whistleblower testimony. And I appreciate that, um, you know, as far as he's concerned. But, like, I, I'm, I also believe firmly that, you know, they've been finding ways to pepper this technology oh, in yeah, to, yeah. to di sadly to different, you know, weapons systems and jets and stealths and drones and shit. And they, you know, they, and it's so compartmentalized mm. that, that you wouldn't know what the fuck it is to recognize it. No, you know what I mean? It's no. not like a, a typical engineer could say, well, this, oh, this part it. of the fucking the new stealth is, actually the part that's anti-gravity you know what i mean like, yeah exactly there's just like, you're no not way. gonna know you're, you're not, not gonna know and you know one one thing you you kind of touched on which is is very true and especially as a uh, a researcher and, a, and a, a public person with this it's basically impossible to not get fucked with at some point oh, like yeah. you know the, the idea that you could traffic in information in this field without accidentally having this information put into that is essentially impossible and you know I, I'm critical of other people, but I don't mind being critical of myself. I mean, I've had some bad interviews. Like mm. I had one recently with a guy that was completely pretending to be part of DARPA. Oh, and if he wasn't, you know, <laughs> and like, I, I, Jeez. that was my mistake. I didn't do enough due diligence. I felt impressed by him. And I've been, you know, given some right. assurances by a few other people that I thought would know and ran with it without sufficient background. And, you know, that's my, that's my mistake that I made. And it's kind of like, you know, when you're, when you're doing this, especially when you're not a journalist, you're not a trained journalist, right. you know, you're just thrown into this in the cold water. Um, I, I think I've personally navigated pretty well. Um, but no, I mean, you know, you're going to get messed with in this subject. We're all getting messed with anyway, but especially as a researcher, especially as a, a public persona, because oh, yeah. you're a conduit, you're a conduit for these people yeah. and they will reach out and they will try and impress you. And it is about due diligence. And, uh, you know, I, I, don't mind saying I make mistakes, but I also learn quickly. Yeah. You know, well, that's the most important thing, you know, um, and trying to avoid, you know, the same mistakes in the future. Absolutely, but, brother. But like, like Salvatore, you know, they, that is a classic tactic of theirs. Yeah. They will reach out. They'll even employ someone yeah. just to hamstring them, mm -hmm. keep them on a leash, keep them from really progressing mm -hmm. and getting their, their ideas out, you know? Yeah. Someone, someone said that, um, someone made the claim that Pais was used essentially just as an IP channel for their own stuff and that he didn't invent this. It's just that he was kind of the place market to flow a load of intellectual property through. He was not happy with oh, that I'm accusation sure. whatsoever. Like he, you know, he's very annoyed by that because he insists that he's responsible for these, but he was not allowed to be present for the technological readiness tests of his own inventions. Oh my God. You know, when he was in, uh, I want to say NORCAD, the Naval Six Air Warfare times. Academy, or like slightly after that, whenever it was, I can't remember, but um, Brett Tingley from The Drive did a brilliant like series of articles on Salvatore Pais following the entire story through his inventions, through the testing, through who was funding it, why were they funding it? And I did an interview with Brett a number of years ago. He's not really part of the UFO research community anymore. He's kind of taken a step back. Right. But he was a great journalist. In fact, he was how I got linked up with Salvatore Pais. But, you know, in his reporting, it was demonstrated that essentially, like, they did initial tests. The patent office refused these inventions because they were outside the norm of possibility, at least, you know, from their right. perspective. It was like, we don't have this tech. Right. 
And then Salvatore Pais's CEO, his commanding officer, basically forces these things through the patent office, saying they're actionable. They are already operational. Right. Key word is literally written in some of these documents, operational. Right. And then they do testings without Salvatore Pais uh, at present, and say that it's not operational and they bin it. So either like, you know, they were lying to him the entire time and, and messing with him, or they've they've essentially taken his inventions, pushed him out of the equation and are running with it in the black ops. That's sadly a common tactic. Yeah. You know, yeah. You they, know, I mean the inventions of secrecy act or whatever it's called back in the nineteen what was it, sixties, seventies, there's like thievery. hundreds of thousands of patents people that don't exist realize. under a national security umbrella. And and how many have been seized? Yeah. You know, if, you if know, people realized and God, if we could see those patents, my God. Stanley Myers, another classic case. You know, just people like this. Him, you know. That poor bastard <laughs> I got in trouble for I didn't ever said that the Pentagon was the ones that <laughs> did anything, but Instagram uh flagged me for a video I made and posted false accusations twice. against the government or something. They were like, like that. there is no <laughs> evidence to support the claim that the Pentagon had anything to do with his death. I'm like, I didn't ever fucking said the Pentagon had anything to do with that. I simply said that the Pentagon was highly interested in his work, yeah, which is yeah. common knowledge. Yeah, yeah. And I informed everyone that his last fucking words were they I've poisoned been poisoned, me, you know? Like, yeah, he like ran out of a cafe going, I've been poisoned. I was like, is, and that is not up for dispute. So why are you censoring me and, and fucking flagging me on Instagram over well, nothing? You know, I think, I honestly, <laughs> I think a lot of the wet works and espionage happens in the corporate space these days. I mean, oh, obviously yeah. a lot of government operators and there's stuff going on all, all over the world. But when it comes to like, you know, inventions and, and energy and propulsion, I think the DOE is probably involved as well. But I think there's a lot of corporate espionage and if there's any wet works ops, it's probably happening, you know, through other corporate aerospace oh, defense yeah. contractors and things like this. So, yeah, we're not we're not out of that period. But no. I mean, I mean, even recently, as... Boeing whistleblowers dying. I mean, that's not even UFO related. No. But literally, we've had two Boeing whistleblowers. One one killed themselves in the car like a few days before his deposition, yeah. and then the other one got like some rare um, viral <laughs> infection and died. And it's like, you know, this is. Pretty obvious. And what's fucking scary is that they've really found a way to do it where they, they plausible deniability. Absolutely. Will There's no way to point a finger. No. You can't directly point a finger at anyone. You just have to look at that death and be like, it's a bit coincidental. No. 